hope that nobody was racist. To act like they don't see you. Do the things they need to do to make people equal. They just are aware of it, but they don't really act on it. That's how you have an understanding of everyone else in the world and what they're going through. And it helps you strive to make things better in general for everyone. It would help them really understand. Or they didn't know and ignored it and hoped no one would say anything. We're starting to take it more away from a culture standpoint and we're starting to use it more as for benefiting from the profit. Kind of subjective. That's just a further proof of white privilege because they haven't even noticed what they're not having to face because of that privilege that they have. That's straight up not okay. Like, I loved anybody no matter what skin tone they were. Like benefit off of someone else's culture. Just in general extremists are the ones to call attention to it. It gets backlash from the other side though. What they're doing is wrong. Thinking based off my skin color and uh, my, like the people who live with me. Advertised so many different skin tones and ranged. I think especially with the hijab it goes too far once you're putting it on a model for the basis of fashion. changes the way society works? Um, I do. A lot of white people are aware of their privilege, but it doesn't really necessarily mean that they do anything about it. And it's not like I'm, like, I'm not, it's not like I'm saying that people actually do something about it, but it changes the way that society is, period. People who don't believe in white privilege, um, that's just a further proof of white privilege because they haven't even noticed what they're not having to face because of that privilege that they have. And so I think an awareness of it makes you more aware of what everyone is dealing with and a just generally like more welcoming environment. Because people are aware of it, they're not going to be quiet about it anymore. It's not going to be like peaceful. That's how you have an understanding of everyone else in the world and what they're going through. And it helps you strive to make things better in general for everyone. It makes the world seem less peaceful, you know? So if people are always screaming about it on social media, oh, that happened because they're white. And if they were black, that wouldn't have happened and stuff like that. It makes, it just, kind of makes the world seem like it's bad. How does an artist, designer, producer, etc., know when they are guilty of cultural appropriation? Uh, I think, um... <laughs> when the media says that this is wrong? It always seems like they have to be told. Because whenever it does happen, it's like, people, like, people, it, again, on social media are posting about it, so it's like, and then that's how they know. And I guess they didn't know before they did it, or they did know and ignored it and hope no one would say anything. If they don't get told, and they just, even if they realize it, they just let it keep going on until it becomes too much and somebody comes out and tells them and they get called out for it and it's an issue. YouTube videos especially have had, like the YouTubers have had issues with the comments, oh, this is cultural appropriation, this is cultural appropriation. They, that seems like when they know. Like the thing with the H&M thing where there was a little boy, he was wearing a shirt and it was like best monkey in the jungle or something like that. And they thought that was just okay. And a lot of people were very mad about it. Um, so yeah, I think that's when people know they have to be told. Um, it's kind of subjective. Like there's some things that people think are cultural appropriation and there's some things that people just like slide. Like it's okay. Like a lot of girls come back from the Caribbean with cornrows and no one really says anything to them. But um, if they had like bandeau knots, that would be a different situation. Uh, but pr as far as producers... I, I guess you have to look back at their previous work and stuff like that and then start, if you see like a theme of the type of cultures and people that are seen in that type of work, I guess that can kind of tell you. They should be told right away that what they're doing is wrong and I feel like as society has like developed they're probably being told you can't do this more so than they did like 20 years ago. When does cultural appropriation become appropriation in the world of fashion? In the world of fashion? When stuff is like when you when you steal that, that person, basically steal their entire culture and then start using it for a benefit or try and like benefit off of someone else's culture. When you're taking somebody's like cultural dress, like if they're wearing a hijab, that's straight up not okay. I think especially with the hijab, it goes too far once you're putting it on a model for the basis of fashion. Well, if smogs, if I'm, I'm, a, I'm a clothing company and I just, I took one and I had a whole bunch of fancy colors too and it just became the latest fad. So instead, we're starting to take it more away from a culture standpoint and we're starting to use it more as for benefiting from the profit. It's not a fashion statement, it's a religious garment that they wear for their religion. It should not be used in fashion unless 
it's the model herself is wearing it because that's what she believes in. And, or like if you were to like wear a hijab or something in, in it, then that would be not okay either because that's more like to do with religion and if you're not that religion, then you shouldn't do it. Like if you're taking something that is specific to that race, religion, whatever, and you're trying to act as that kind of person, then you are completely in the wrong, especially with Halloween. That's a big no-no. I feel like when it's when it's like they're being very specific, specific. So like say someone was trying to do like a Native American theme and they have someone dressed like Pocahontas, you know? I feel like that's kind of not okay. Um, so Halloween, some people like to dress up as Indians, which is not really okay. I personally think it's cultural appropriation whenever anyone's making a line, even if it's like, oh, I'm making a Native American line, or you're making a line associated with a certain culture, unless that designer is specifically of that culture and is wanting to make a line of clothing for their own people. But in fashion, that's often not. How did your attitude about skin tone go as you got older? Um, as I got older, my attitude about skin tone... I think as a kid, I didn't even notice skin tone. I think it was just something that happened. And as I got older, in middle school, I know I wanted to believe that nobody was racist. I loved anybody, no matter what skin tone they were. Well, I was kind of like unaware um, of like any kind of current issues that were going on as far as skin tone or skin color, because uh, I went to a private school and it was all white kids. Well, at first I was really oblivious to it because growing up, I, I lived in a really nice neighborhood. And for me, I wasn't really used to seeing a lot of black people before I came to Georgia. I was in Ohio, and it was it was really fine. Like, it, it really made it, I, I felt like I fit in a lot. It was it was pretty, it was actually pretty cool. I, I had a lot of fun there. And then I came down here. Like, as soon as I got to public school, I started realizing that these people aren't exactly being treated equally, like, by the law system or a bunch of other systems, too. <laughs> Not saying Georgia's a bad place. But, you know, I went from like one of the, well, even up there, I was just always looked at a different way, but my friends still never judged me. But it was always that guy who lived in like the apartments, everybody else was living in houses, but I really didn't think it was because of my skin color or something like that. But once you got down here, I went to um, middle school and then people started like joking about it and then it would become like really obvious because in Sandy Springs, it's either you're really in an apartment or you're in a really nice house. And I think as I've gotten older, I realized that racism exists not only between whites and blacks or everything, it exists within races as well. I grew up in very diverse places. My um, elementary school, like I saw Asian people, Indian people, Native American, black, and, and it. I never even, when I was younger, I didn't even know what they were called, you know? They were just, hey, this is my friend. Her skin looks different. I didn't even notice that their skin looked different than mine. I just, that's just how it was, and I loved them no matter what. And then middle school, I went to a school in Texas, and there's a large Hispanic um, population in Texas. So, um, all like a lot of people in middle school were Hispanic, and I didn't, I did notice it then actually, because I guess that's like I said, I got older and I knew what Hispanic was at that point. So, it, it's like I was, I was in an apartment. I guess you know, people with really nice houses. They would be usually white, and then people in the apartments are usually black. And you don't you don't really start paying attention to that type of thing until someone makes it obvious. So I was approached. I was approached one day, and then they're like, "Some I think a white a white boy asked me if my apartment complex was known as the hood." And I I started looking. I started looking at myself, and then I looked at the people who lived who lived in my apartment complex with me, and I started noticing like. I think they were just thinking based off my skin color and uh, my, like the people who live with me, you know, in my apartment complex, they probably assumed that that was a bad place to live just because we were black and they live in houses that were white. But yeah, that's all, that's really, that's really it about that. Colorism not only affects one's dignity and self-worth, but also seeps into facets of everyday life. Colorism is a gender phenomenon, mostly affecting women, that creates social and workplace inequities. 
These inequities negatively affect women and men of color and can most clearly be seen, but is not limited to in East Asia. To address this issue, marketers advertise ways women can lighten their skin, which will allow them entry into certain fields, ultimately superimposing the idea of the lighter the better in the minds of millions of women. Men and women of color go as far as using skin bleach and creams and jellies, which will cause immense health hazards. This is all in efforts to be seen as more appealing to the opposite sex, but primarily to the predominantly male employer. This is what poses the most immense problem to women in the workplace. Women face a colorism struggle to look appealing in order to get a job, a factor which should never come into question in the employment process. Darker skinned men and women are forced to lighten their skin not only to please society, but to sustain themselves as a being. As a woman in the workforce, do you feel your color has hindered your ability to find and secure a job? Yes, because even interviewing for jobs or even in my current workplace, I do feel as though my employer has preferred a lighter skinned woman over a dark skinned woman like myself. Being a darker skinned woman, have you been given any preferential treatment based on your color? Any discrimination? I haven't felt any preferential treatment, but as far as discrimination, yes, because in today's society, it does feel like people do prefer a lighter skinned woman. Do you find that colorism in the workplace has affected you directly? If so, do you feel these effects have been toxic to the way you view yourself? As a kid, Watching things on TV, I did have thoughts of myself. Like people would prefer a fair skinned woman over a dark skinned woman. But today, at my current workplace or my past workplace, working around other black people, it hasn't been a problem for me. Many males of the workforce see this issue as a non existent or something you should just merely get over. Do you think self esteem issues or a toxic view of oneself should be something you should just get over? Colorism in the workforce has affected women to the point where they need counseling for their self-esteem issues. So I don't feel it's something that women should just have to get over, but that's just how the world is. With the right education, men and women around the world could be made aware of the detrimental effects colorism has on women. Thus, forever changing the underlying discrimination in the employment process and subsequently how individuals see men and women of color.